Yo, 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 what is up, everybody? Welcome back to another video. Today, we are going to be talking about the role of Sentinel and how they provide the ability for us to win both on attack and defense in the game of Valorant, okay? So let's get right into it. So for the role of Sentinel, this is kind of like, it's a different type of play style than compared to the duelists and initiators and controllers. Sentinels have a specific gameplay style that involves information telling and tunneling the enemy, okay? On a map like Bind, you have four lanes. One, two, three, four. These four lanes provide information going into a bomb site. So for A, you have one and two, okay? And the only time any enemy can get into these sites is so through those two choke points, okay? So let's start things first when it comes to the defensive role. Defensive role is all about isolating and figuring out where the enemy is coming from very early on. So each cipher, each killjoy usually has a specific play style when it comes to a default setup. That means you spread out your equipment, making sure you're in the radius of your equipment to play off of and to punish those enemies that go into your equipment. So first things first, like on a site, I sometimes like to throw my turret up here. It gives me early information into short. Okay. I also like to play on my alarm bot somewhere close to here so I can provide information through all of A so when I know they're pushing A, I mean, my turn most likely be destroyed, I have a molly right here, and as soon as they destroy it and I hear them about to push I just pop it, and I'm delaying their push, and now my role as a sentinel is I delayed their push and now I have to communicate to my team, well they're coming A they're coming A, okay, so rotate rotate, rotate so, they just, they, so you will have two mollies on the site. So as soon as my turret is destroyed, bam, pop that. Now my alarm pot hasn't been activated. So I know that majority of my enemies are going to be coming from here. So I'm going to most likely play an off angle over here. Or you can play an angle over here. Or if you want to get real risky, you play an angle right here. I wouldn't recommend this angle because it's a very easy angle to clear. And it's more like an angle for your duelist. Now, I just provide so much information just on that setup where if I know they're coming B short, or sorry, A short, yeah. my turret will spot them immediately. However, if my util is not going off, this gives me an idea, well, they might be going B. So I can just hold down anchor a site and have all my teammates rotate onto B, anchor that site, and I can anchor A, play for any lurkers, attack any lurkers, play an off advantage for any lurk plays. So with all the information my turret's staying alive, sorry, with all the information that my turret is still alive or something like that, or my alarm bot still hasn't been activated, I know, and my I can provide that information to my team, well, nothing's happening today. My alarm bot, my turret has not been activated. However, so we can start stacking up on B. Now we can then start four stacking, maybe five stacking. And I don't have to rotate until either the bomb's planted or my teammate knows that the bomb's down or something like that. However, uh, binds an exception. I have the opportunity where if I want to, I can play for the teleporter play, okay? So I get into a nice little off angle right here. And I play off my alarm bot. So as soon as uh, my alarm bot goes off, I just swing. However, on the defensive side, sometimes it's just not that easy, okay? So sometimes you have to play around with the location of your turn. Sometimes you don't want to make it too obvious. So sometimes I will actually place my alarm bot here, maybe with a nano swarm. And so when I activate it or when the alarm bot hits off, I can just activate my nano swarm. However, I will either place my bot there or I'll place my bot a little bit closer if I have enough time. That's a bit more of a riskier alarm bot, but then throw a molly, bam, start to rotate, and then I, I provide all this information over here while I then I throw my turret over here. I can now I can play around with the settings. You want to provide as much information as possible, but you also don't want to be too predictable, okay? But there's no one correct way to play Killjoy, but there's very common setup plays. Now, when it comes to Killjoy and Cypher, if you know that you're having a tunneling problem or like more like they're just nonstop rushing you, 
and especially with a lot of dive comps like Jet and Raze, where they just pretty much just dive right upon you, you can play around with that setting. So you know for constantly, maybe your teammates can provide extra information and they stack up in bath, maybe. Like you have two players right there, you know they're going to hit A pretty hard. So maybe you have two players playing in bath, the so one, two. You don't need to put your turret there. You play around with your turret with the information that your teammate cannot provide. You don't want to place your turret where your teammate is. Like, it's just absolutely redundant. Your turret is basically like a sixth person on the map that provides additional information. Who's not going to get a kill. That's why he's a bot. But he's going to provide plenty of information. So maybe I'll place a turret right there. Or maybe I'll place a turret right here. And then I will have maybe my alarm bot right here. And then bam. And so when they dive onto me, the alarm bot's been activated. I could just pop both of my nano swarms. And this is called a kill setup, okay? Now, kill setups are exactly what they're supposed to. They're supposed to eliminate the ability for the enemies to push into a site. And for the enemies who do push into a site, like a jet or a raise, you punish the shit out of them. Now, the exact same rules apply to the other site. Where maybe I want to provide information for hookah, but I don't want to play in hookah. So I, maybe I'll place a turn here. But also, this information provides a lot of information there. And also, it aims there. So maybe I'll put an extra alarm bot right here. While maybe a nano swarm right beside it. Now, if this gets destroyed by someone in hookah, I still got information over here. So I can just focus my peaks off at hookah. And if somebody tr triggers my alarm bot, I can just pop it. And then jiggle peek it and make and punish anybody who pushes through it. Or you might get lucky and your nano swarms get a kill. So again, so maybe I will place a nano swarm close to my alarm bot. My turret is most likely the role for my turret in this situation is to get a peek into hookah. However, that is a very basic peek or basic turret for hookah. Most turrets play back here. Where it's very a lot harder to destroy it, especially off the bat. Because like if you're swinging into hookah as the attacker, you're like, oh shit, there's a turret, and now he knows where I am. Because you can't you can't hear that turret, unlike other locations, where you're clearing sites, you're clearing sites, and as soon as you provide information, bam, you just provided a little too much information to the cipher, or the sorry, not the cipher, but the killjoy of the opposing team, and then you will cause a potential mass rotation from the other enemy team however if you know they are just rushing hookah and you don't have to worry about anything along you can just set up some kill trips or kill setups so sometimes i like to maybe have an enemy be long holding that site while i have an alarm bot maybe right here up to the side and it's all about being patient okay it's, it's all about placing a trap. Okay? So you don't want it to activate right away. You want them to enter into sight. Now, if that thing activates right away... Bam. So that pops. They're screwed. And then you're ready for this peak right here. So, like, a, maybe a common area would be... Place your molly right here. Place your molly right here. Play right here. And as soon as the alarm bot is activated, you just pop these strips. And you just got to be a little bit careful, okay? And as simple as that. That's basically the defensive role. You always want to provide for each bomb site a basic, a default setup for both bomb sites, especially the way enemies play. So if you have a team that likes to lurk a lot, who doesn't really play together, however. Then eventually they mix it up you got to adjust on the fly and you just you don't want to constantly have one type of setup you want to have the ability to mix up two so for example if you know that you played b three rounds in a row don't just continue to play b eventually the enemy is going to kick in so well the cypher the killjoy have been constantly playing on b so why we don't we, we just should just go a like there's no point in going b and that's not really a good idea. You want the you want the enemies to push into you 
to prevent them so you because you know where they are you have the ability to spot them early on and then play off your equipment so how do we master attack well when it comes to sentinels they play a lot of different play styles especially when it comes to the offensive side now there's a lot of certain rules that the sentinels can do provide a lot of information for map awareness especially for rotations and such and so your job is to gain as much map control as possible so for example if you're attacking on bind now i'm using bind as an example because it is actually one of the harder maps to lurk on but it's a, it's a lot easier to gain map knowledge on is sometimes i like to throw my turret right here and so the job of the turn is to actually clear here and clear here and so now we can provide a lot of information where if my teammates don't want to push a they don't have to properly clear a lot of these angles to actually rotate it's not until we get up to here they have to start rotating uh, like hard peaking stuff okay now with all the information we provide over here we provide a lot of good stuff a lot of i want to say a lot of positive positive communications and a positive map knowledge for our team however eventually you want to take the objective where sometimes i want to lurk versus i want to join my team so on those attacks where i want to lurk this turret is going to be good where it provides a lot of information for up here however eventually the turret's not going to provide that, that much information over there while i'm going i would say be long so maybe i might put the alarm bot up here put it in a corner while i slowly walk up b and always make sure as soon as you swing a corner have your gun out never swing a corner with your knife out especially if you're lurking and now i'm doing at this beginning of the round now the key is to lurk is you want to be super patient because at any point you might have to communicate your team to your team well i just heard some teammate uh some enemies leaving let's hit the site or let, give it a couple seconds and now let's rotate because i want to get into the uh the ability to punish any of the anchors or i can punish the anchor for providing a lot of negative information to the team so like let's just say i'm playing against another cypher i'm playing an opposing cypher or killjoy where they might have the alarm bot or their cypher chips around or i might they're providing so much information now pretend i got it to here i provided so much information for my team where now, if we want to hit the site, we can slowly rotate. Now, all we have to do is clear here. We don't have to clear here since I have already peaked and already got it. And all we have to do is when we hit a site, I can actually just call my alarm bot back. And after the cooldown, I might just bam, put my alarm bot there. That alarm bot will actually clear that corner. Maybe I can throw a molly over here into the smoke they place down and hit the site with my teammate, okay? It's all about providing a lot of information and a lot of map knowledge for your team. While, however, if you provide a little too much map knowledge, your teammates might get a little restless and they might just hit A while they don't have the proper timing. It's all about communicating your timing. Where just telling your teammates, just make noise at A, make some presence, but don't engage anybody is really key. Or if you do get a pick or tell your team, get a pick, maybe I can definitely maybe catch this anchor off guard and I can punish her or him. Now, let's just say you won probably, let's just say you won a round because you got an amazing, uh, let's just say flank route and such. And you just punish that team because they provide a lot of negative, let's just say communications to their team and provide a, a lot of negative information. Now, do you want to constantly flank in each round? Or sometimes you want to just place a random turret, just place your turret right there. And all you have to do is stay within the circle. Don't die. And just provide maybe information. You don't have to peek anybody. But as long as you stay up, a turret provides, well, this is clear. This is clear. All this is clear inside hookah and obviously inside garden so my teammates wants to rotate quickly it's a lot shorter and it's a lot quicker or if my teammates here and have all this information and they're like well let's see 
maybe we should just hit TP and just bum rush B while we just provide it. They don't have to clear any of this area because they we my turret provides so much information that we know that this is clear. Nobody's hiding here. Nobody's here or here. And all we have to do is actually check B window and check garden and anywhere maybe B teleporter as soon as we plant the bomb. So we provided so much information and we provided so much that the fact that the enemy will actually be our rotation will be a lot faster compared to the enemies as long as your teammates actually are not afraid to hit a site. So again, just to recap, your goal as an offensive sentinel is to gather as much information and provide a lot of information to your team, but also provide as little information to the opposing team. Your job is to be one of the last people alive. The unfortunate situation is you are going to be the last one of the last people alive. And if your teammates flame you for that constantly, it's because they don't know how your role is supposed to be. The Sentinel and the controllers are usually supposed to be the last people who survive each round. And that's for, for specific reasons, because the duelists are the people who engage gunfights the most, while the initiators are the ones who set up the duelist, while the controllers and sentinels are the ones that control that portion of the map you're attacking, or you're defending and providing a lot of information for the portion of the map that you are protecting. So basically that is it everybody for all the information I can provide to you for Sentinels and the basic role of how to understand them. Now I want to be clear, Cypher and Killjoy are the two best Sentinels and they will probably be the two best Sentinels for a long time coming. Deadlock does definitely provide a lot of good information. The problem is a lot of Deadlock stuff. She falls into the trap of she's caught in between Cypher and Killjoy, but Cypher and Killjoy are good for different reasons. It just really depends on those two play styles. There's no point of playing Deadlock because if you're going to anchor as Deadlock, you should just play Killjoy. Now, if you want to place your equipment on the site and just rotate, well, you should have just played Cypher because Cypher stuff provides a lot more information and unfortunately Deadlock does and doesn't. As it's a lot easier to sneak past Deadlock's um, sound barriers compared to Cypher's trips. Where for Cypher's trips, as long as you put a trip crouch and head level, it's un you're unable to hop over or duck under unless you're Omen or Jet. Now, when it comes to a place in like Chamber, you're again Chamber has a different play style compared to Killjoy, and when it comes to Cypher. And I, like truth be told, Sage is the most useless character in the game, unfortunately. It's better to pick up maybe Killjoy or Cypher and learn how to play them instead of Sage. Sage provides zero information. Thank you so much, everybody. That is it for the video. If you liked this video, hit the like and subscribe down below. I honestly thank you so much for all your support. There's like I'm very speechless about the growth I've had in the pretty much the past month, especially with the uh, release of uh, Valorant console. And again, if you haven't checked out my streams, I am currently ascendant, so I kind of have an idea what I'm talking about. Also, my peak is ascendant, so on PC. So again, I just I have so much information about these characters. Uh, I am a Sentinel main, so if you have any questions, I will happily provide any information, especially for the Sentinels. Uh, Sen Sentinel fans in the chat, especially those Sentinel one tricks. Uh, definitely, definitely try out to learn how to play a controller and check out that other video as well. Definitely learn how to play each role properly and how to understand how each role affects your gameplay style. Now, maybe you, the reason why you don't want to play Sentinel is because you're playing the long game instead of the short game where you're playing chess while other people are playing checkers. That is kind of the mindset you have to be in. Okay. So that is that, everybody. Peace out. Have a wonderful night. And I'll see you next time, okay?